6-5 from Oklahoma State, number three, John Stocks! <laughs> Was excited about the opportunity of going up 2-0 against Chicago. We knew that it was going to be a tough game because we had just beat them. And right from the start, you know, you could just feel the energy and everybody fed off of that. And a typical Bulls Knicks game, a tight, tough, didn't know who was going to win. Comes down, you know it's going to come down to a play or two. And now McDaniel on the recovery finds Stark. Coach Riley, you know, wanted to go pick and roll with me and Patrick Ewing. The side pick and roll that we were running with, uh, with Patrick Ewing and what John did was go away from the pick. I got to the right side of the court and I saw B.J. Armstrong peeking. Every time I turned my eyes, he would jump to my high side knowing that the pick is coming. And on that particular play, I came down and I just cut my eyes early, and B.J. Armstrong did what I thought he was going to do. He jumped to my high side, and Patrick was able to, you know, get a nice little push on him. Not too hard, but a nice little push on him. And I just took off baseline. It was like Moses part in the Red Sea, and he was able to get there, then Michael and Scotty and Horace came over late to try to block it. Patrick obviously got him a little distance or leverage. And, you know, the challenge at the hoop was one in which John met with such great force. Starks, yes! What a move by Starks who was able to sky to the basket. So he elevated and did sort of a sidewinding type of dunk that was so fast and went through and surprised everybody. It was unbelievable to watch how, how quickly he got up in the air and how quickly he finished the play. And you watch the Bulls look at themselves like, what just happened? Strong hand checking Starks goes baseline. Oh! <laughs> you gotta love it. That might be the loudest moment I've ever heard in Madison Square Garden. Armstrong guards him. Starks now drives right baseline underneath and jams it with the left hand. So vociferous. I couldn't even hear on the earphones. At that time, I was doing radio with Mike Green. I, I, I couldn't hear anything. The place erupted as loud as I've ever heard it. And the next lead by five with 47 seconds to play. The crowd catapults you. They make you do things that uh, normally you could not do. So I'm sure Starks probably couldn't do that again if he tried. But it was an adrenaline moment, adrenaline feel moment. He wasn't thinking, he was reacting. Starks now drives right baseline underneath and jams it with the left hand. John made them call his name John Starks. I mean, that the crowd went wild. First time I saw a picture of it is the next day in the newspaper. And when I picked it up and saw who was in that photo, I was like, you know, gotcha. I used to always like to think if, if you looked close at Starks while he was playing, you could almost see his heart beating because that's how he played. And for him to make that kind of play made it extra special for all the Knicks fans who felt like they were going along for the ride with him. If he had done that in Indiana or Utah or somewhere else, it probably would have been just another dunk. But the moment of the game and who it was against, Everything came together perfect, so now it's known as the dunk. That's the great thing about sports, is that the emotion, the competition, will send a player to another level. And then we all, we all stand up and, and take notice and, and say that we saw something pretty special. For me, a defining moment is, is the unexpected, an amazing turn of events, uh, something that you didn't see coming, and all of a sudden, there it is. And I think maybe, uh, a, a great way to define a defining moment is by it's one of those that you know when it happens that in 20 years from now you're still going to be talking about it and you're going to be saying I was there for that. Armstrong guards in. Starks now drives right baseline underneath and jams it with the left hand.